complications and consequences of IVH. What are the complications which are going to happen? So first thing, you know that if there will be damage, it will be bleeding in the germinal matrix. Germinal matrix is the part where neuronal and glial precursors are developing. So there will be germinal matrix damage. And this will happen even in grade 1. And so there will be damage to the neuronal and glial precursors. And they can potentially, potentially lead to, so risk is there of neurological deficits in later life. They can involve frank cerebral palsy, frank intellectual dysfunction or there can be subtle features like developmental delay, some tone abnormalities, some late onset features like uh, specific learning disabilities or the child just not performing that well academically. So those kind of features can happen due to germinal matrix damage. Second type of complication and consequence which can happen is PVHI. What is PVHI? Periventricular hemorrhagic infarction that can induce. So PVHI induced porencephalic cyst can form. So second complication or consequence is PVHI induced porencephalic cyst. Now what happens is hemorrhagic infarction will happen and many times brain parenchyma in that ipsilateral hematoma which was formed in the brain parenchyma that will undergo resorption and the neuronal tissue will undergo resorption and a cyst will be formed. It will be a single cyst and often it will be communicating with the lateral ventricle. So that cyst is what you call as porencephalic cyst. Chances of porencephalic cyst are more. Risk is increased in babies less than 750 grams. So babies less than 750 gram developing PVHI, higher chances of porencephaly are seen. It is usually found to be a single cyst. It is a single cyst. As I said, it communicates with the lateral ventricle. Now we need to understand that porencephalic cyst and can also sometimes form in periventricular leukomalacia. So they can ask an exam, how will you distinguish PVHI induced porencephalic cyst from the PVL, periventricular leukomalacia induced porencephalic cyst. So PVL associated cyst will not be a single cyst, usually they are multiple cysts and they occur symmetrically. You know that PVL is a bilaterally symmetrical lesion, right? Damage to white matter bilaterally. So there will be symmetrically placed cysts. Multiple symmetrically placed cysts. And they are non-hemorrhagic in nature. And they may or may not communicate with the lateral ventricle. They may or may not communicate with the lateral ventricle. Some do, some don't. Can multiple cysts be seen in PVHI? Very rarely, yes. Review articles say that yes, it can be. But even if they are, suppose there are two cysts, one on one side and one on the other side, one of the cysts will always be larger compared to the other. So symmetry will not be seen. Whereas in case of PVL, it will be multiple cysts and the size usually will be of the same size, right? Because PVL itself is always a bilaterally symmetrical thing and they will always be non-hemorrhagic in patients of PVL. Right? Remember this point. Now the third complication, which is the one we are going to discuss much more in details, that is post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus development. Right? So the third complication is post-hemorrhage PHH. PHH stands for post-hemorrhage hydrocephalus. Post-hemorrhage hydrocephalus. This occurs according to Nelson. What is the incidence? According to Nelson, it occurs in 10 to 15 percent of all VLBW IVH patients. Right? But according to AIMS protocol, it occurs in 25 percent of all VLW IVH patients. This is what the AIMS protocol says. So there is some difference, maybe it is different studies they are using, different population we are using. Maybe this is a western study, this is definitely a western study, maybe this is an Indian study, we don't know, but different percentages are mentioned. So it occurs in about 10 to 15% of all VLBW IVH patients. 
Now, why will hydrocephalus develop in the patient? Now, what is the cause of PAH2 develop in IVH? Cause in IVH. There can be two reasons. One, there can be acute onset of hydrocephalus. Acute onset will occur due to obstruction to the CSF. So, due to CSF obstruction by the blood clot. That will cause obstruction and obstructive kind of hydrocephalus can be seen. Second is progressive hydrocephalus, which is actually very dangerous. And progressive one is the one that we need to watch out for. This will occur due to obstructive arachnoiditis in the patient. So, there will be a cascade of inflammation which will start, which will result in the blocking of the arachnoid layer, arachnoid uh, transport of CSF, flow of CSF and that will be called as obstructive arachnoiditis, right? Now, what are the chances of post hemorrhagic hydrocephalus to happen? Remember that PHH, PHH occurs in about 4% cases of grade 1 IVH, about 12% cases of grade 2 IVH and about 70% cases of grade 3 and 4 IVH. So, can you see how drastic this difference is? So, PAHHH that is hydrocephalus is related to how severe the IVH in the patient is. Now, my question to you is why is this PHH dangerous, especially the progressive PHH which is developing? See, the acute one is also dangerous, but PHH whether it is acute or progressive, it is going to cause pressure on the developing white matter tract. Remember that preterm brain continues to develop after birth as well and white matter tracts are still developing, they are immature. So, pressure occurs on the white matter tracts plus there is increased free radical injury which is seen. There is extra vasected blood which is there, macrophages will come, the body's own defense processes will come, they will try to degrade the iron. So, some free iron will be released here, free iron will be released, there will be some inflammation happening because of the hemorrhage, so cytokines will be coming. Combination of these three or four things are going to cause long term white matter injury. It may or may not be as severe as periventricular leukomalacia, but often if goes unchecked and you don't intervene and hydrocephalus is not stopped, hydrocephalus is not relieved by CSF tapping or by shunts, you will find that eventually features similar to cerebral palsy which you see in PBL can also develop. And that is why PHH needs to be watched out for and PHH needs to be managed sometimes with active intervention.